The Moonlight Greatsword, bestowed by a Carrion Queen upon her spouse to honour long-standing tradition. For it is Rani's sigil, a full moon, cold and leaden, and this sword is but a beam of its light. As tarnished, we are all in the gutter, but some of us are looking at the stars. Hey guys, Ashen1 here, and welcome to this Elden Ring video on how to get the Moonlight Greatsword. If you like my content, please like, subscribe, hit that bell icon, and join and follow me on Discord and Twitch. Links in the description. This is a legendary quest, my fellow Tarnished. There is no easy and early this time. The path to the Moonlight Greatsword is adventurous, dangerous, and above all, epic. So, of course, there will be spoilers. We start with a word of warning. Most of this quest is boss locked and some of the bosses are very tough. So know that to complete this quest, you must have done or be ready to do the following. Defeat Royal Knight Loretta. Defeat Renala, Queen of the Full Moon. Defeat Star Scourge Redan. Defeat Mimic Tear. Defeat Baleful Shadow. And finally beat Astel, Natural Born of the Void. If you are ready for this, Let's get straight into it. The quest for the Moonlight Greatsword is actually Rani the Witch's questline. Come to the Carrier Manor in the northwest of Larunia. Clear the dungeon and its boss, Royal Knight Loretta. From Loretta's Sight of Grace, you will gain access to the Three Sisters area, and you want to come to this tower here, Rani's Rise. Come up to the top and talk to Rani to get the quest started. You will need to talk to all three of her servants and then head back and talk to her again before you can leave, or you will be stuck in her tower. Next we need to go to Nokron, the Eternal City, but we can't, not until we beat Star Scourge Radan. So you will need to come to Redmain Castle in East Kaelid, get to this area and talk to this NPC here. A cutscene will start and you will then need to head up the stairs behind the NPC to eventually get to a teleporter. This will warp you into the Radan boss fight. Once Radan is beat, a cutscene will play and a shooting star will land somewhere in Limgrave. From the Fort Height Grace, you will find a huge crater has appeared. Make your way down to enter Nokron, the Eternal City. In this dungeon, you are looking for the Finger Slayer Blade. You will find it in an area called Knight's Sacred Ground, and the huge skeletal statue is your landmark, as the item is underneath this in a small room. Be prepared here to fight the Mimic Tear boss. I couldn't find a way to avoid this, maybe you can. Once you've explored and have the Finger Slayer Blade, simply take it back to Rani at her tower. Exhaust her dialogue until she gives you the inverted carrion statue. Take this inverted carrion statue to the carrion study hall in Eastern Lerunia. Use it on the moon altar at the site of Grace right at the beginning, and this will invert the dungeon. You'll need to carefully drop down, fight Preceptor Miriam, and make your way to this elevator. This elevator will take you to a bridge that connects to a divine tower. Come to the top and you will get the item, Curse Mark of Death. Now head back to the Three Sisters area where Rani's Rise is, but now come to the top tower, Renna's Rise. Come to the top of the tower and teleport. This will take you to the Ainzel River. Pick up the doll from the coffin immediately and rest at the site of Grace just next to it. Choose Talk to Miniature Rani. Keep doing this until Rani talks back to you. It usually takes three or four times. Once she has spoken, just head down river to eventually enter Noxella, the Eternal City. Stay south and west from the first site of Grace and eventually you will come to another site of Grace just before the mini NPC boss, Baleful Shadow. Kill this mini boss and you will receive the discarded palace key. Hold on to this for now. From the Baleful Shadow, come through these doors to the Lake of Rot. Here, you will need to be able to run from the initial site of Grace through the Scarlet Rot Swamp 
all the way to this building in the south, down some steps and to a site of grace. So make sure you have plenty of healing flasks at level 3 or 4, and you can also use persevering boluses to cure scarlet rot. From the Grand Cloister Grace, make your way down the ledges and come forward and to the left. Click on the coffin at the end of the Rot River. This will warp you to the final boss area. There is a stake of Marika here just before the fog gate. Then, all that's left is to defeat the final boss of the quest, Astil, natural born of the void. This guy can be tough, but with sorcery I got him on my fourth go at around level 60. He ain't no Dark Eater mid -ear. From the site of Grace that replaces Astel in his boss room, you will now see a blocked path. Take the discarded palace key we got earlier to Renala's site of Grace. After defeating Renala in the Rea Lucaria Academy, the Grand Library site of Grace becomes available. So come here and use the key to open this chest. Get the ring and head back to Astel's site of Grace and the path will be open. Take the elevator up to the Moonlight Altar and get the site of Grace on the left. Head up to the Cathedral Ruins and get another Site of Grace. Don't worry about Adula the Dragon. From the Site of Grace, drop down this hole carefully, and eventually you will come to a cave with Rani's body in it. Interact with the body, watch the cutscene, talk to her afterwards, and an item will appear where she disappears. The Dark Moon Greatsword And its unique skill, Moonlight Greatsword. And here it is guys, the Soulsborn Legend, the Moonlight Greatsword. Phew, what an epic adventure that was. I feel ready to take on anything after all of this. I hope this guide was helpful to you, and let me know in the comments what you think of the quest and the sword. Thanks for watching, more videos are coming, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.